Hey folks, Chef Peppers here. I'm back guys. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I've uh, done a video, but uh, we have a salmon from the Faroe Islands. It's called Backer Frost. And I've been wanting to do a video about the salmon. I haven't done uh, how to fillet a salmon or anything. So I'm gonna do the unboxing for you guys. I just got this about an hour ago and I wanna uh, unbox it and see how it looks. And um, I wanted to do a video on filleting a salmon because I've been watching uh, people fillet salmon and you know, I've been filleting for years and back in the day when there were no fish available in supermarkets, we had fish markets, it was important that you fillet the fish right. And, and the way that I see them spinning fish around and just hacking through the bones, lifting up the tail end and cutting through it, that's not the way we used to fillet fish. So right now we're gonna do the unboxing. Uh, I haven't even gotten into it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tape and we're gonna see what this uh, back of frost salmon looks like and see uh, what the quality is like and see just how good it is. We're gonna do some for sashimi. We're gonna eat some of it raw and we're gonna just see uh, what all the hype is about. All right, so here we are. So it is a genuine back of frost. Uh, these are the barcodes, the back of frost invoice. I won't tell you how much it cost, but uh, it wasn't cheap. <laughs> all right, so let's see what we have. Let's see what's inside the actual uh, insulated cooler box. Let's see if we can uh, cut it out. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to actually cut down the box to get it out. Good thing I got a razor blade for a knife, right guys? All right, I'm gonna cut the tape on the side and let's see what we have, folks. Now, oh yeah, it's very nicely packaged as you guys can see. It's in a really nice thermal. So uh, the sales rep at Backer Frost, his name's Rick. Hi Rick, how you doing? Thank you for shipping me this. What he says is that they ferry the salmon out from the ferry uh, Faroe Islands uh, off the coast of Scotland, and they ferry it to London, England, where I'm from. And uh, then they uh, fly it from London to New Jersey where the, um, the back of frost uh, people are, and then they FedEx it, you know, to the designated area. In my case, it's Portland, Maine. All right, so we still see there's some nice gel packs in here. Yeah, and it's just the whole fish. I was hoping that he was gonna send me some stuff for sauce, but apparently he, that was, uh, he was unable to. So uh, that's gonna be fine for right now. We'll put those ice gel packs. So it's very nicely, uh, packed and here's the fish and it's not previously frozen it's fresh right out of the farm and they have ocean farms so we're going to go ahead and put that there and we're going to get this out of the way and then we'll break into our packaging and let's just see how this fish looks it's supposed to look really nice let me get a cutting board to put under this fish so that when we actually fillet it it will be uh, uh, securely on a cutting board on this towel. All right. So I'm kind of excited to see what, what it looks like on the inside. And uh, I haven't filleted a fish, guys, a salmon, I should say. I haven't filleted a salmon in must be well over 20 years, 25 years, but I will tell you this, you don't forget the, the techniques that we use, um, you don't really ever forget. And the way that I see them filleting salmon today, it's not like how we did it in the old days. All of the guys that have been around for a while. Oh yeah, I got that fresh smell. It's like a, almost like a cucumber. It smells really, really good. So I'm, uh, I'm already pretty pleased with what I smell. I mean, they do a really nice job. That back of fresh, back of frost, excuse me. All right, so they've already taken the guts out and it looks really nice. So what I think I'll do now, uh, because I am gonna eat uh, a lot of it filleted, I wanna look at it on the inside. Oh, that's beautiful. It is really, really fresh. It's chilled to the touch and it smells 
really fresh. It's really nice. So I think what I'll do uh, before I fillet it is I think I'm going to go ahead and um, scale it. So what I'll do is I'll scale it. Uh, hopefully I don't get scales everywhere because when it's this fresh, the scales should come off pretty easily. Uh, excuse me, guys. So, uh, yeah, it never fails, does it? <laughs> when you least expect a call. So, look, the scales are coming up really easy. They're not really flying up too bad because I'm not going to be real super vigorous with the scaling. Usually, we scale it like in a box or in the sink, but I'm going to show you guys. You know, this is an old school scaler from way back when, and it's really nice because the scales gather up inside of the, the cavity of the actual scaler. And so, this is scaling really nice and easy. Once the, the older the fish gets is one thing that I remember, the harder the scales are to come off. And um, the scales are coming off really nice and easy, guys. They're not going, it's not going too crazy sticking. I'm scaling at an angle using the bottom part of the scaler to kind of get the scales off. I am going to eat the skin uh, when I do cook the salmon, so I, that's why I am scaling it. And I'm not going to steak any of these. I like salmon steaks, but... For me right now, I'm gonna do fil uh, fillets so that uh, it's gonna be completely boneless. Once I fillet it, I'll take the pin bones out. I'll show you guys how we do that. But this is scaling really nice. It's not super messy. I mean, a couple scales will go in here and there. But um, yeah, this is really nice and fresh. It feels really firm. It feels really good. Uh, when I'm finished scaling it here, I'm gonna put it in the sink and rinse it off. And then we'll put it back on the board. We'll wipe these scales off. But there, that was pretty simple. That was pretty simple. And it's about a 10, 10 and a half, maybe 11 pound fish. So uh, we're happy about that. We'll get some nice ice cold water going down it and I'll clean off my board. We'll put that in the sink and rinse that off. I'll get these scales off of the board. It's always nice to have a little bit of a squeegee to get the bulk of the scales off and then we can uh, either wipe the board down or we can flip it over. But these scales are really uh, easy to come off, you know, as long as you get them relatively quickly after you take them off of the fish, it shouldn't be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we'll shake out that towel a little bit. Looks like uh, some really nice salmon glitter. <laughs> I'll flip the board over so we got a nice clean board to start with again. And I'm going to rinse these scales off. We'll do a nice little rinse off of the scales and then we'll put them right back on that board. Uh, this is a beautiful fish. It's so firm and it's nice. Whenever you're handling the salmon, you always can grab it. They don't have any really sharp fins like your snapper and your bass and your grouper. So give it a nice little rinse out and then kind of let it drain off best you can. And then we put it back on the board. All right, I'm gonna take some paper towels and just kind of wipe the fish down a little bit. So we uh, maintain a clean cutting area. And there we have it. All right, that's beautiful. So, so far, I like it a lot. There's a few more scales that are right on the back end right here that I just wanted to take off because that's where we're going to be cutting. So it's, it's, um, it's important to note when cutting a salmon, unlike uh, your traditional fish, like a haddock, a cod, a snapper, a grouper, salmon don't have a backbone. So you have to make an imaginary backbone when you cut this fish. And the reason why um, I say that the traditional way of cutting uh, today doesn't apply is because, you know, they just run the fish right down, you know, they'll take their knife and they'll cut into it and just run it down both ends. And then when they're done, they'll start trimming up the fillet. Well, uh, back when I was filleting fish for a living, there was something called case presence where the, the fillet couldn't have double cuts. It couldn't look um, hacked up, if you will. And then we, did, we couldn't spend a whole lot of time trim, trimming up the fillet. Once we took it off the bone, it was a simple trim off the, 
the anal fin, and uh, and that was it. And the fillet had to have been ready because we were cutting thousands of pounds a day on a production line. There were no cutting machines. There were no skinning machines. It was all hand cut. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna show you I have a fillet knife, one simple knife. And because we're going to uh, use the head for, for stock and, and sauce, if you wanna maintain the collar, you can cut and cut the head and get all of this body meat. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna cut it far into the head because I wanna leave a little bit of meat on the head so that when we do cut it, uh, we have a little head for the collar because I'm gonna bake that. I'm gonna make a special dish with that. And I'm also gonna uh, use the head for a stock or a sauce. So we could do part two. Yep, yeah, so we're gonna do a part two of this also as my sister just informed me. Yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do now is um, go on ahead uh, to part two. So tune into part two so you can watch me. We'll leave off right here, and then we'll go ahead and start filleting in part two, okay guys? Thank you so much uh, for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on part two of Back of Frost Salmon.